Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the Lori Vallow Chad Daybell case. This is an interesting and complex case that is still going on as I make this video. So just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. So first I'll look at the background and timeline, and then I'll look at the mental health and personality factors. So starting with the background. Chad Daybell was born in 1968 in Utah. He would get married in 1992 to a woman named Tammy. Eventually they would have five children. He graduated from college in 1992 and eventually started his own publishing company he would publish doomsday novels. In 2015, after hearing a voice commanding him to move, Chad and Tammy moved to Rexburg, Idaho. Lori Vallow was born in 1973 in California. She married in 1992. She married for a second time in 1995. She married for a third time in 2001 to a man named Joseph Ryan. They had a daughter named Ty Lee in 2002. They divorced in 2005. Her fourth marriage was to a man named Charles Vallow in 2006. That couple adopted J.J. Vallow in 2014. J.J. was the biological grandson of Charles' sister. In 2007, Lori's brother, Alexander Cox, assaulted Joseph Ryan and threatened to kill him. He was sentenced to 90 days in jail after pleading guilty. After moving to Hawaii in 2014, the couple moved back to Arizona in 2017. In 2018, Joseph Ryan, again Lori's third husband, died and his cause of death was ruled as a myocardial infarction, so a heart attack. He was cremated. Lori, at some point, read one of Chad Daybell's books and developed an obsession with his writing. She appeared on Chad's podcast in December 2018. The topic of that podcast was The End of the World. After this, Lori told Charles that she no longer cared about him. Charles filed for divorce from Lori in February 2019. He said that she viewed herself as a deity who was preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that Lori would kill him if he attempted to interfere with that mission. In February, Lori disappeared for 58 days. Charles then stopped the divorce proceedings, saying he wanted to make his marriage work. Right? What could go wrong here? Who can blame him, though? Nothing says true love like declaring oneself a deity and threatening homicide. July 11, 2019. Charles went to Lori's rental home in Chandler, Arizona, to pick up JJ. During an alleged altercation, Alexander Cox, again Lori's brother, fatally shot Charles in the chest twice. Alexander claimed it was self-defense, and he was never charged by the police. Lori was present during this incident. When Lori was questioned by the police, she laughed. She talked about a trip to Hawaii that was coming up. She was nonchalant. Neighbors reported that there was a pool party at Lori's house later that day with loud music and lots of people swimming. The next day, Lori texted Charles' sons, who he had from a different marriage, informing them about his death. She did not answer questions about the cause of his death. As it turns out, Charles made his sister the beneficiary of his life insurance policy, but Lori wouldn't find that out until after Charles was dead. September 2019, Lori takes Ty Lee and JJ and moves to Rexburg, Idaho, the same town where Chad lives. September 2019, Ty Lee and JJ are seen for the last time. October 2, 2019, Brandon Bordreau, the husband of Lori's niece, Melanie Bordreau, claims that he was shot at the shooter was driving a Jeep Cherokee that was registered to Charles. And of course, Charles had been dead since July. On the same day, Lori buys a wedding ring. October 9, a masked assailant attempts to shoot Tammy Daybell with a paintball gun. She survived this attack, but just 10 days later, she was found dead. Chad refused to allow an autopsy, which amazingly he was allowed to do. Initially, no one questioned the story. The cause of death was recorded as natural. So a 49-year-old has a cough, dies from it, and they say natural causes. Evidently, this coroner had come from the mid-19th century 
to take a job in Idaho, part of the Time Traveling Corner Exchange Program. November 4, 2019, Alexander Cox and Melanie Bordreau arrive in Rexburg, Idaho. The next day, Lori and Chad get married in Hawaii. Lori tells people that Ty Lee had died years before, and Chad tells people that Lori did not have any minor children. November 26, 2019, the Rexburg police conduct a welfare check looking for JJ. Extended family had called because they hadn't heard from JJ in several months. When the police could not locate JJ, Lori and Chad told them that he was in Arizona. November 29, Alexander Cox gets married in Las Vegas, and the next day, Melanie Bourdreau, who was recently divorced, also gets married in Las Vegas. The day after this, the police visited the Daybell's residence again with a search warrant after they were informed that JJ was not in Arizona, but Lori and Chad were gone. Records indicate that on December 1, 2019, they took a flight to Hawaii. They were not accompanied by any children. At this point, the police view Tammy Daybell's death as suspicious. They exhumed her body on December 11, 2019. The results have not been released as of the time I'm making this video. The next day, December 12, Lori's brother, Alexander Cox, the same man who shot her fourth husband, Charles, dies in Arizona under mysterious circumstances. I guess he got that cough that was going around in Idaho. December 20, 2019, the Rexburg Police Department announces that they are investigating the disappearance of Ty Lee and JJ. January 30, 2020, Lori, who had been ordered to produce the children, misses the deadline set by the court. February 20, 2020, Lori is arrested in Hawaii on two counts of felony desertion and non-support of dependent children. June 9, 2020, human remains are found on Chad Daybell's property in Salem, Idaho. Chad is arrested and charged with obstruction or concealment of evidence. Family members have indicated that the remains belong to Ty Lee and JJ. So at the time of making this video, both Lori and Chad are in custody. There are no murder charges at this time, but it seems likely that they'll be on their way shortly. I wouldn't be surprised to see murder charges not only for the children, but also for Charles Vallow, Alexander Cox, and Tammy Daybell. I also wouldn't be surprised if Melanie Bourdreau was charged in that shooting incident involving Brandon Bourdreau. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. So to start off with, it's important to mention here that there's no way to know what's going on. There may be nothing going on in terms of mental health and personality factors. Evidently, Lori was evaluated at one point during all this, and a mental health professional released her. This could simply be a situation where people decided to commit crimes. For this analysis, I'm going to run under the assumption that Lori and Chad committed the murders or conspired to commit the murders. When looking at all this, two main theories surface to explain these behaviors. The first theory, of course, is that Lori and Chad were delusional. They had delusions about the end of the world. Chad and Lori allegedly told Melanie that Tylee and JJ had become zombies, saying that their original spirits were forced from their bodies and they became possessed by a demon, a disembodied spirit, a worm, or a slug. Lori also said she had spiritual visions. Charles had reported that Lori believed she was a deity. She also believed that Charles had become somebody else, so he was a zombie too. This sounds a bit like a Copgrass delusion, and I'll talk more about this in a moment. And of course, we see that Chad had a long history of writing about Doomsday, and he believed that voices told him to move to Idaho. The second theory is that Lori and Chad are psychopathic, so they had this tendency to manipulate, they had a lack of empathy, grandiosity, a wanton disregard for the rights of others, and they were excitement-seeking and impulsive. So if they were psychopathic, then they would have been that way for a long time. We don't see a late-onset psychopathy. People report that both Lori and Chad were upstanding, responsible citizens. Maybe a bit unusual, but we see nothing here that indicates that they were psychopathic before. So back to the first theory of delusions. What could be going on if this were true? Well, delusions can be caused by a number of conditions. Substance use, some medical conditions, but most are related to mental health. The more common mental disorders associated with delusions would be schizophrenia and other disorders related to schizophrenia, like schizoaffective disorder, major mood disorders like major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder, brief psychotic disorder, and delusional disorder. So just looking at Lori here, 
I'm not aware of any evidence that says that Lori had negative symptoms or disorganized speech or something like that that we would see with schizophrenia. We don't see a history of depression or mania like we would expect to see with major depressive disorder and bipolar. The symptoms were present for more than a month, unlike what we would expect to see with brief psychotic disorder. So that leaves us with delusional disorder. Essentially, what's required for delusional disorder would be the presence of one or more delusions for a duration of one month or longer. The delusions can't better be explained by another disorder and other than the effect of the delusion itself. Functioning is not markedly impaired and the person's behavior is not odd or bizarre. Lori did seem to function pretty well and it's not clear if she was odd or bizarre outside of delusional behavior. I think looking at these different categories really highlights the importance of a quality history. Without knowing the history of behavior, it's difficult to see what alignment would make sense. I mentioned the Kopgras delusion before. This is referred to as a delusion of misidentification. With this particular type, we see that a person misidentifies people who are close to them. One of the most common situations is for one spouse to believe that the other spouse has been taken over by an imposter, which seems to fit the behavior we see in this situation. Something like delusional disorder could explain how Lori became involved with the whole doomsday thing. The delusions came on and that caused her to develop an interest in Chad's self-published books. So if something like that happened, if she was not delusional and she became delusional, then what could have happened with Chad? Because he was involved in these crimes as well. It seems as though Chad's behavior had already been a bit odd. He had a real obsession with the end of the world and he had this voice induced relocation. It doesn't seem like a stretch to think that he could have had delusions already and that's what connected him to Lori. After connecting based on their shared belief that Lori was a deity, money may also have become a motive. Everyone knows that it's hard to be a deity on a budget. Lori allegedly took money from Charles and may have believed that she was the beneficiary of that life insurance policy. Regardless of what mental health symptoms may or may not have been present, we see this theme that Lori and Chad simply killed at will in a way that seems so impulsive and obvious that it's amazing they got away with so many murders. It's like they were just going on with their lives and they were unfazed by what was happening, by what they were doing. They certainly were not going to win the Master Criminal of the Year award. So this brings me to the question of guilt or innocence. Of course, right now, they are presumed innocent. But what do I think happened here? Well, I would say it seems pretty clear that they're guilty. Just the circumstantial evidence alone is convincing. What are the chances that all these unusual deaths could just occur at random? In order to believe that they are innocent, one would have to believe that there was some other person just following them around and killing people that were related to them. In addition to the actual deaths of so many people connected to this couple, we see other evidence. In September 2019, Lori predicted that Tammy would die in a car crash before Lori arrived in Idaho. Evidently, she made similar predictions about Charles Vallow. She predicted he would die as well. Lori and Chad repeatedly lied to the police, and of course the remains of Ty Lee and JJ were found on Chad's property. To say this makes him look guilty is a bit of an understatement. Now, the crimes of this couple really don't make any sense. They could have been together preparing for the end of the world without killing anybody. If the world was really going to end, if they really believed that, why would murdering people be so important? Why the wedding in Hawaii? They seemed to be very future oriented for a couple that believed that the world was going to end. So this kind of points to the idea that maybe there weren't delusions. Maybe they were just making this up to perhaps represent a defense later on. It's not really clear. This case really underscores the difficulties that law enforcement has when investigating people who are not obviously suspicious. At first glance, these two didn't appear to be criminals, and that bought them enough time to commit several murders before being arrested. So those are my thoughts on the Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell case. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my channel and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to my Patreon in the description for this video. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.